our next speaker is uh, is a success story <laughs> she's a success story because uh, the last time she was here in GopherCon India she spoke here last year it was after that things started changing for her she met her future employer she's from Mexico City she was working in the university now she's working in uh, shuttling between Mexico City and uh, Florida doing a lot of code working from home uh, doing some work in uh, go mobile and Android and uh, she's often mistaken for an Indian <laughs> in fact the customs immigration officer at the at the airport uh, happens to say why are you filling in that form it's for Indians you know so namaste <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So yeah, I'm very, very happy to come here again <coughs> because I really feel at home in India. Uh, we have very many similarities in Mexico and yeah, those stories are true. Like I've been mistaken for an Indian, but I'm quite honored. <laughs> okay, so today I'm talking about uh, my story of building a product with mobile uh, Go, which is particularly different. I mean, <coughs> you have seen a couple of talks concerning uh, Go development for mobile devices, the technical stuff, the technical aspects, what's like behind, how do you do it, how do you bind stuff, and so on. But uh, what happens when you actually want to take that to production for a thing that will get you money eventually? So is it stable? Is it not stable? Uh, is it worth it? So, well, it's GopherCon, so of course the conclusion will be it's worth it, but, <laughs> <coughs> but i let you know how. Okay, so I am in, in, an, an engineer at Arden Labs, um, but I'm based in Mexico City. I'm a former physicist, and I'm still very trying very hard to make Go work for something very cool for science. I haven't still found anything, just I don't know, Go bindings like C like products. And I'm an Android enthusiast. Okay, so my talk today will cover two main aspects. Uh, the first one will be deciding to use Go to build an actual product, as I've said. And the second aspect will be uh, a super quick reflection on mechanical sympathy which is a concept that I don't know if you're familiar with it, but who of you has ever heard about mechanical sympathy? Okay, so it's cool. And it's super cool for every system in the world, but I find it particularly useful for mobile development. So, uh, the outline for the part of building a mobile product with Go uh, will cover the initial considerations. Why Go? including why not Go, well, situations when it's not that clever to use Go for mobile development, my own experience in my, in my company, and examples. Okay, so the initial considerations for building a mobile product are, uh, of course, like whether you should build it natively or with a framework or, or if it's even worth it to write a mobile app and not just a web app. Then you have to consider functionality, performance, and UI, which uh, who of you has ever written an Android app, either with Java or, okay. So Java and the UI for Android are very connected. If something goes wrong in the threads for concurrency in Java, then the UI freezes and it's the end of the story. So that's super uh, important to take into consideration. Then. Uh, your backend infrastructure for a mobile app is also super important because you may have uh, kick-ass backend infrastructure for another type of system that may not work for a mobile um, environment. Like for example, it may carry a huge payload that is not affordable to, to transmit in a mobile app, you know? because of battery or data usage and stuff like that. So, without the right API, design and implementation, uh, an app, a mobile app performs poorly. So, Go helps with all of this. And making something available on mobile implies that your infrastructure is going to be able to handle all this workload. 
imagine that with Java and imagine that with Go. As you have seen, like many talks and many examples on how, how much code you have to actually write in other languages like Java or C and compare them, compare the same exact example in Go, well, the, the actual code is like less than half. So this is particularly important for performance in mobile because um, we may not be aware of it, but the actual code actually gets stored in some part of our phones. So in Android, with the wide array of devices that exist out there, uh, there are many um, cheap devices that are not able to, to carry this load. So it's important for that. Uh, it's important to take that into consideration, like your amount of code in Java, if it's sufficient, if it's working, and how much of it actually your phone is carrying, and how life is simple if you, if you use Go for the same task. Okay, so now this is leading us to why Go? Why use Go for your mobile product? So before, some years ago, we had two options to build Android products, um, either natively or non-natively. And natively, we only had two options, either Java or C. And the non-native way was Ruby, JavaScript, uh, C Sharp, and all those frameworks. Uh, even, I, I don't know, independent implementations. And suddenly, I don't know, this is funny or weird. Like, everybody trashes Android as a platform. They say that it's insecure and not performant and blah, blah, blah. But suddenly, every single uh, framework or language was available for Android development. So out of a sudden, like in a matter of a couple of years, we have native Android development not only with Java and C, but also with Go, Salem, Rust, and Kotlin. And well, the non-native environment is still the same. So why is Go and not uh, Salon or Rust or Kotlin or any other uh, language that you already like um, for native development. Okay, so first of all, let's start like, I, I know that a lot of communities don't appreciate this, but comparing stuff is useful, I think. So, uh, why go? Instead of Java or C, well, enable to create a big, robust, and efficient product in Java you have to be a very good developer. And this doesn't mean that with Go you don't have to be one, but it's easier to, to mess something up with Java. For example, think of threats, of concurrency. Uh, you have to have a very solid uh, background on computer science. There is no book or manual that tells you like in which thread you have to put things. It's more just like on a case-to-case -case basis. Uh, so it's very common to see Android apps crashing because they, are, they do not have uh, proper thread handling. And with Go, well, you just have Go routines that make all that super simple. Uh, and C, well, not a lot of people, uh, including myself, are good with, with C at that level. So it's not, the, the learning curve is super steep. So then Salon and Kotlin are uh, also JVM, in case you like the JVM languages. But their support is still very low level. So that means that for using it as a developer, it's not that friendly. Um, and in the case of Salon, it's just available for Eclipse, which is not a good idea because Eclipse is getting deprecated for Android development. So it's not good for actual product. It may be good if you want to experiment, but not for a fast-paced environment that you need for a product. Then Rust is still flowing, and there's still room for improvement, and they do not have an actual team supporting this. And then, well, Kotlin, the same case as Salon for the JVM, but uh, the, the, uh, they have a poor compiling time. So that is especially important comparing it to Go because I don't know you, but after a, lot, uh, a, a long time, well, about two years working exclusively with Go and then going back to Android with Java, the compile time was an issue for me. It was like, what is this? <laughs> so also Kotlin is not that popular, so there are not enough resources out there to, to consult or if you have 
uh, if you need help or have a question. So, um, why use Go again? Uh, so, not everything in the Go environment and community is fun and games. Uh, it is possible to actually create great things uh, without messing up with uh, basic things such as threads as I said. Uh, it, it is compatible with Android Studio, almost like out of the box like. You just have to set the Go path and the Go root and you're ready to go. And then just decide whether you want to do it natively or via the SDK as Hannah just explained. And then you have great compile times and it really shows. As I said, uh, when you're working with both platforms, the compile time really, really, really gets a difference. And then there, this is very important. Um, there is a group in Google that is actually working uh, on the mobile infrastructure for Go. So what does this mean? That, well, of course, they are dedicated to it. They are focused on it. But it's also a maintained project. So you can expect uh, deliveries. You can expect upgrades, etc. It's not just like an indie project. I don't have anything against indie projects, by the way. but. Uh, for such a big responsibility and to create uh, products for the future, uh, this is a great asset to have. And, and well, uh, this, this team has worked for uh, the support, to have support for the ARM architectures and it's based on Linux. Well, Go is based on Linux. And, and it's also easier to reach mechanical sympathy with mobile ar uh, architectures with Go. Uh, but we will see this later. So now, why not use Go or when not to use Go? So uh, this, is, this has to do a lot with my personal experience and in my company uh, building a product. So uh, I'm not here to talk to you about my product or my company, but it's important to have a context. Um, so that you can understand like priorities and maybe that this will happen to you too. So my own experience goes like this. Uh, I have worked with Android and with Java for a long time, almost since the beginning of the platform. And then I started working with Go little by little till I went like full time on Go. And then uh, in my company, we had the opportunity to build an internal product that is uh, mobile based, so we have for iOS and Android, and I was in charge to build the Android project. So I was like, oh my god, I'm finally able to work in an actual project, not a demo, not a GitHub project, GitHub project or a blog post, you know, it's the actual thing. So I was super excited and I asked my boss if I could use Go to build this product. And he was like, yeah, go for it, but make sure it is stable, make sure it works, make sure it doesn't end up like being uh, like a waste of time or reinventing the wheel. And I was like, no, 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 I promise you this will work. Right? So I was super stubborn and just trying to make it work. But in the end, uh, our product relied heavily on Google APIs like maps, like uh, media consumption, etc. So those APIs are already there, and they're super out of the box. So I don't know about you, but or if you heard about this, but it is totally possible, it's completely reasonable, to be an Android developer and not being that good at Java stand, al stand alone. Because the APIs are so easy to use that y this is not a recommendation, of course, but, <laughs> but you don't have to be an, a Java expert in order to be a decent Android developer. So uh, I found myself having to use Google APIs that I had used like two years ago before I left Android development. And this, of course, when you're building a product, the, the pace is faster, uh, your bosses are pressuring you more than a normal code base and stuff like that because you're supposed to make money with this. So I was like, I'm not writing the Maps API, well, the functions of the Maps API with Go again just for the sake of it. So it's, I would not reinvent the wheel if it's already there and it just works with a line or two. So that was the first consideration and I was just like, 
heartbroken because I was like, no, I cannot use Go. But, well, more on this later, but you can use both. So at this point, I was like, no, let's go for Java. And then I, we also have the iOS uh, version of this product. So that was already done. Well, not completely done, but it was more uh, advanced than our Android version. So uh, I needed first I needed to catch up. And then uh, we didn't, couldn't really benefit of the fact that you can do this cross uh, compiling thing, well, cross-platform thing, because the iOS thing was already done, so that, that was not a point for me. And if you have worked with Android or work in a team that is developing an Android product, this is very common, because they usually, well, teams usually develop the first iteration of the product for iOS or for web, and then depending on, on the success and the markets and the clients, uh, they decide to to build an Android app. So many times, uh, building a product, you will not have this benefit of convincing your boss or your team that maybe using Go will be better because you can do the cross-platform thing. So that was out of the box. So with this in mind and with time in mind uh, and my bosses in mind, <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, let's do this in Java. So I don't care. <laughs> But, okay, so features define the future of your Go mobile app. So, as I said, if the app relies heavily on Google official APIs, it's not that smart to reinvent the wheel. But if you do have like a spare time and you just want to get creative, go ahead. Um, also, one thing to have in consideration is what type of UI is your product using? Um, the previous talk, the gaming one, and well, also based on what uh, Hannah said in her talk, uh, in, in those cases, it's totally worth it because then you just use the OpenGL uh, available tools for with, uh, with Go for Android uh, instead of building a traditional app. Uh, but if you have a regular app with, you know, the traditional menus, the traditional buttons, etc. Maybe the smartest thing to do will be just to have the Java shell with its own XML, etc., and then just use uh, Go as a library to import a specific function or share a specific function with either your web or iOS app. Uh, also, another thing that you have to have in consideration is the learning curve. Uh, if you already have Go developers versus learning it from scratch, and this is very important for product development because maybe you cannot afford that or you don't have the time to do that. Which leads us to, and this depends on the team you have. Uh, it's not the same to have Android developers in your team learning Go than Go developers understanding uh, the Go, the mobile architecture. I leave it on your side to decide which is easier, but for me and my experience, it is easier to be a Go developer and understanding the architecture for mobile platforms than the other way around. So that, that also counts. Um, and then, well, what if you already have a Go developer in-house and you just want to build a little product in Android? Is it worth it to hire an Android developer full-time for just that? Or um, I don't know, um, maybe the same person can build both things, like backend on the mobile client, and that makes a coherent system too. And well, uh, the end of this part is a little example that you can actually see, which is not the product that I'm building. <laughs> well, I contribute to this project too, but this is not the product that I'm talking about. So, uh, Lantern and FireSuite, have you ever heard about this project? So, it's a very interesting project. Uh, FireSuite is based on Lantern. So, FireSuite is an Android app powered by Lantern that gives direct unblocked access to Twitter from anywhere in the world, which is super cool because it's against censorship and all those things. It's literally anywhere in the world. It still has some room for improvement, as it's completely open source, 
but it's an interesting way if you want to learn uh, about privacy issues, etc., and also Android development this way. Because, uh, as I said, Firetweet is based on Lantern. So Lantern no, is not only available for Twitter, it's available for the whole internet. So if you live or a user lives in a country with censored internet or uh, censored websites or whatever, they can use Lantern and access the internet through that, which is a really cool thing to do. Uh, so the, the FireTweet app was built uh, from Lantern, but this was not rebuilt. It was not rewritten. It was uh, literally taken from Lantern, which is uh, a web client. Well, it has its own backend, etc. But with in for purposes of this example, it's a web thing, and the creators of FireTweet just made an instance of Lantern project, and and they mm, took advantage of the cross-platform thing to make it work in Android. They didn't do it for iOS because to do a lot of stuff uh, with this application, with iOS, you require to jailbreak the device and stuff like that. So it was not worth it, but for Android it was. The thing is that we didn't have to, to type any new code except for the UI, uh, and Lantern is already written in Go. So uh, FireTweet is a very cool app written in Go uh, based uh, on a cross-platform thing. So, the last part of this talk is a little reflection me on mechanical sympathy uh, based on everything that I've said, and which is super important when we are working not just in a product, but in software uh, in general. So, uh, mechanical sympathy, uh, there, there are many talks out there, so you can Google it and actually see the original talks on this and the actual concept of this. But mechanical sympathy uh, is um, understanding how hardware works uh, because it makes you a better coder. Uh, and you don't have to be an expert maker or an expert software uh, hardware engineer in order to do this. You just have to know how the guts work in order to, to write better code for it. So as full stack programmers writing mobiles, which is very, very common, uh, you know, what I said about uh, trying to be cost effective for product building, like, hey, you, you write Go, why don't you write the mobile app in Go? Which is not always the case because you have to know about the architectures and stuff like that. So uh, uh, as full stack programmers or other architecture programmers going into the mobile world, uh, mechanical sympathy with mobile architectures really makes a difference because uh, understanding that a mobile device has battery limits, has memory limits, has uh, performance limits in every single aspect uh, really makes you think, uh, and for example, um, writing the, the same code for iOS, uh, Android, and a web client, it, may be, it might work like code-wise. But does it work hardware-wise? Is it equally performant on all three platforms? And well, Go helps with this. Go is really good at this. Because I don't know if you have, if you have ever seen that, but when you take a look at the standard library in Go, it's very easy to spot uh, computer science elements that maybe you were not aware of, it, or of them. Like, I don't know, the how Go routines work, how channels work, how slices work. And all these packages like uh, work very on a low level, but ver are very friendly for coders to use. So, uh, as opposed to Java, right? The, as we've said, and I hope that you all agree, Java is super complex just to build something very small, which leads me to uh, well. The myth of high performance solutions is that, that they have to be super complex and super heavy and blah, blah, blah. But this is not true because high performance solutions must do, by definition, must do the most amount of work in the fewest instructions possible. And guess who's good at it? Well, go. Um, and for example, modern compilers are, are built to optimize code. But what about 
if they have simple code, well, they work better, they, they do a better job with simple code. So let's think of performance as something more than just efficiency. Because if we just think about efficiency, um, maybe we're not taking advantage of the whole Go picture for mobile development. But performance, let's think of performance as an enabler for innovation. So if you don't have to, to think about uh, thread handling, if you don't have to think about how much amount of code is actually your phone using and things like that, you have the time when you are building a product and you have a fast paced environment, you actually have the time to build more features, to add more, more interesting stuff in less time rather than fighting two weeks with thread handling or race conditions or things like that that Go does very well as opposed to other programming languages that are designed for mobile. So, thank you. Do you have any questions? Questions? Looks like people are getting hungry, Veronica. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. OK, people, it's that time of the day, lunch time. <laughs> All right, the lunch is outside. We will regroup here exactly in one hour at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much. Please enjoy lunch.